Hello, welcome to Hook Legends and thanks for watching this video. I'm Henry Cummings, your host. In today's video, I would like to present to you an alternative method for keeping your um, batteries charged on your boat. You know, nothing will end a terrific day of fishing faster than an undercharged battery. Now, before we get into the details, I would like to say if you have not subscribed, um, please reach up now and hit the subscribe button and like. Make sure you click the notification bell so you will be alerted when future, future videos are released. Now, first, you know, I would like to, there's, there's probably about three things I would like for you to think about before making a decision to switching over to a solar charging system for your battery. The first thing that you probably want to think about is safety. One of the reasons, first of all, I haven't charge my batteries with a typical plug it into the AC outlet type of charger in probably five or six years. I mean, I have um, the boat that I'm sitting in now and I have a boat that's sitting in the water down on a much larger lake. And both of those, um, this boat and the other boat are, are pretty much charged 100% with free energy, solar power. So the primary reason I did it was safety. Um, I'm in the market looking for boats and one of the things I noticed when I was looking at all the pictures Everyone had an extension cord out across their yard for the people who didn't have the boat in a the garage. They had extension cords scattered out across the, the yard. Now, cables and cords across your yard usually meet the fate of a lawnmower engine or some other type of um, outdoor maintenance equipment. So, again, I have a boat dock that is probably 200 feet between where I have power and the actual boat dock. And yeah, I, I looked into running power that far, and uh, not only was it going to be pretty costly, but I just couldn't get above, I couldn't get beyond my concern for safety. When it rains and the water level rises, and rain typically on a, on a slope bank goes downhill, and um, I just didn't feel safe having electrical current um, going down there. So that was one of the reasons I decided it was uh, for purely just safety reasons. Same thing here. I, I used to run a cord across the yard over to my house and um, it was just a pain. Every time I came back, I had to plug it in. When it rained, I took the cord up and put it back in the house. So I just decided to convert over to, to solar energy. Probably the second thing is just convenience. You know, when I, when I come home now from fishing, I back in, I plug it in. I, I have a pole right next to my boat I just with a solar panel on it. I plug it in and it's done. I, I don't have to worry about it. Um, same thing down um, at the lake. I just plug it in and I don't have to worry about it anymore. So you can't beat the convenience. Maybe you're going to take the family on a camping trip. Maybe you're going to be in an area that doesn't have convenient power for you to plug into. Or maybe you're, you, maybe you fish tournament and you're traveling long distances. This gives you the ability to just take the solar panel and sit it in the bottom of the boat while you're traveling. Um, until recently, I, I have a, a, a shoulder issue I have to contend with. So um, I didn't want to lift that panel in and out every time, so I put mine on a pole. And I'm going to show you this system set up, by the way, here in just a little bit. But um, you can travel and have that solar panel sitting down on the floor. So that was another reason was just for con convenient. Another thing is um, if you give me a choice to have something for free or to pay for it, 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going to take the free route. So sunlight beautiful sunlight it's free it's a source of renewable energy that it doesn't cost you anything now I don't know how much you're gonna save on your utility bill but um you're bound to save some for that initial investment of a solar panel uh, a solar charge controller and um, you already have your battery so you have one third of what you need of the two, um, three things you're gonna need um, to put this system together so those were the reasons I made my decision to go to solar energy for charging my batteries. So um, with that being said, I think I'm gonna jump into it now and I'm gonna show you some of the components that make up a solar charging system. And um, I'm gonna show you the components and then I'm gonna actually show you my setup. So let's jump into it. Okay, so first I wanna illustrate the three basic components other than wire that make up your solar charging system. So the first component is a solar panel. Now the solar panel is what's going to take the sun's energy and convert it into DC current power um, for your for your for your batteries. Now the second component 
is a solar controller and these are called solar controllers solar regulators um, I've seen them go by a few different names but they're all basically the same the third component and this is just for illustrative purposes here is the battery because yours is going to be your um, 12 volt or 24 volt I, I just happen to have 12 volt but yeah you can have set up a system for your your 24 24 volt um, batteries also now with that being said this is a this is a small one you know it'll help maintain your battery after it's already charged but it's probably a little bit too small to depend on I'm going to show you the one that I have here in just a little bit and you'll see what what it looks like and what size it is so once again I just wanted you to see the components that goes into the system now see if we can get a closer look here hope you can see this hope it focuses in okay but um, on this particular controller, now this one is a little more complicated. I use it for um, my Big Lake dock installation. It has the ability to charge two batteries at a time. Um, it can get a little, I won't say complicated, but it can get a little sophisticated. You can say charge the first battery, you know, 70 or 80 percent. Once it's full, switch over and then charge the other one. So you control and can set a priority on how you want it to make a decision on charging those batteries now it's going to charge both of them at the same time but you have a little bit of input into how you charge it i always choose for my my um starter battery to be the highest priority now these are pretty easy to hook up you know you just have um two these little pins down here actually they're not pins they're holes and you cut your wires and you stick them in there and then you have these little screws right here that you just screw and tighten down on the um, you screw it and you tighten it down on the wire so once again it's just um, it's pretty straightforward this, this one costs a little bit more they range in prices probably from uh, 15 bucks maybe to 50 or 60 dollars just depends on what features you need in this particular boat I don't need a lot of fanciness I charge one battery. I don't have two batteries in this boat because I don't have an engine. I use this boat in lakes that um, have a requirement where you can't have gas engines. So once again, my simple my system here is not as complicated as the system I have down on another lake. Okay, so now I've shown you the components that make up this system. Now I'm going to actually show you my application of it. All right this is my this is my system so as you can see hope the light move over to a different way so you can get a better see but there's my solar panel it's about 24 inches by about 30 inches so when you buy these panels and this panel by the way if you get a, a good close look up you see a piece of a bolt hanging down on each one of these corners those are legs I like I said I have a, a, a shoulder issue right now and I didn't want to lift it anymore it's not that heavy but I just didn't want to lift it anymore so I took mine and I mounted it I mounted it to this pole you can kind of get a look there on how I set it up but I used to just take this and plug it in and set it in the floorboard over there I would set it in the floorboard of the boat you know so that way if you wanted to be mobile you could be mobile so now if you follow these two wires that come down and when you put this system together you want to make make sure you follow the instructions that come with the solar charger controller um, because you want to make sure you have fuses in line at, at the right places but you can see this wire kind of comes here on the inside see let me hold it up because i have my fishing rods in here i didn't take them out and some of them have fallen down but anyway if you follow these two wires you'll see these two wires come down here and there's my plug right there so I just plug this and unplug that that's all I do when I come in I come in and I plug that up and it's um it's taken care of so I'm gonna move over here to a different position so you can see so the wire comes in and the wire then comes over to this solar controller so I'm gonna stick this under here so you can see the solar controller I hope you can get a good look at that um, but this one is a lot more simplistic 
than the um, one when I was just showing you all the components together. So, and here's my, here's the real battery. So this is the battery that it connects to. So once again, if you get one of these, you can just simply lie it in the floor and this will give you the ability, the flexibility, the portability to just go anywhere and keep your battery topped off or keep your battery charged. You know, you can even have multiple solar panels connected to your, your, your um, controller. So, but it just depends on what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. So I, I hope you find this video helpful and um not again you can like i say you can you can save yourself you can save yourself some money and this is definitely a do-it-yourself project thanks for watching hook legends Nice one here, one nice crappie to go in the cooler.